This is RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV lifestyles, RV travel, and RV living. So grab a cup of coffee, kick back, and let's talk about RVs. Hello everyone, this is Rob, your host, and welcome to another week of RV Talk Radio, episode 31. Really glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us. I want to remind you that you can listen to us on iTunes through your cell phone, or you can go directly to our website, and we also always make a video version of this show. So, anyway... Find a way that you like to listen to us. Take your time. You have all week to get through our show. So once again, welcome aboard. Did you know RV Talk Radio has a newsletter? Well, if you go directly to our website at rvtalkradio.com, off to the right, you'll see a little display there to sign up for our newsletter. It comes out every week, and what it does is basically tell you whenever we have an update to the site. You do not get a newsletter unless we've made an update. We also want to remind you that you will not be spammed, and you can unsubscribe at any time. So don't be afraid. If you'd like to get our newsletter, just go to the site and sign up. Also, did you know that RV Talk Radio has bumper stickers or window stickers? They're very attractive. We sell them for $5 a piece. They, the proceeds go back to the show and also paying for the product itself. So if you'd like to have one, look in our description of the show. Down below is a special link for RV Talk Radio stickers. We appreciate it and we hope you like them. This week on the show, we thought it'd be nice to talk about the future. So we're going to talk about the future in RVing for me and Sherry on RV Travel Quest and talk about things that we'd like to see the industry do or other groups that we're dealing with and how we kind of foresee what um we're where we're going as far as traveling and ideas so i hope you enjoy the show once again we always ask you guys to send us your comments and ideas for the show there's all kinds of things that we get hit with all the time and just like today some of the things I'm going to talk about today were things that are brought up from comments and we really do appreciate it so keep that stuff coming in and we'll keep talking about the things you want to talk about I did get a kick out of some of the comments we got from last week's show and we love the comments and they said I was getting a little bit deep <laughs> and I probably was but I wanted to be realistic. Uh, you know, I get kind of upset or if I hear people saying this dreamland of RVing, and it's it takes a lot of work to be an RVer and living small. Living small is not easy. But anyway, I appreciate the feedback, um, and we're also going to try this week with a little less music in the background. It's kind of a signature thing we like to do. Uh, I may mix it in and out, but it's a flavor that we like for the show. But we'll give it a shot here and we'll do a little bit of, uh, of both. So it's a compromise. So I hope you enjoy the show. When it comes to the future, me and Sherry are always keeping our eyes open for new technology, new ideas. Um, also, within a budget, too, uh, we have to make sure that we use common sense. And I want to talk a little bit more about the 360 videos that we do for RV Travel Buddy. And I know 360s is an up-and-coming thing, and, and, it, and some folks are like don't get it or they don't have the most up-to-date software on their computers to see it, and it turns out to be fuzzy on them. However, we just discovered, and you may be noticing this week, that we've been sending what we call RV360 moments up on Facebook. And the reason we're doing that is to show 360s on a different platform. So right now, our choices, until we find another choice, of course, but our choices is YouTube 
And the other one is we found out that Facebook allows us to upload 360 videos as long as they're no longer than tw uh, 10 minutes long to our face um, to Facebook itself. We're having a little trouble updating directly to our pages, but we can actually put it in our main account and then push it off to our pages like RV Travel Buddy and RV Talk Radio. And what I've noticed is a lot of folks saying, wow, that's really cool. We like it. And these were people that couldn't see it before on YouTube. So what we're doing is during the week as we get kind of neat little things and we don't know when they're going to come out. But when we get like little shots of something kind of interesting or a different concept of looking at something in the RV world, with a 360 camera, we're gonna send up on Facebook what we call 360 moments or RV 360 video moments. And we're experimenting with that and then we'll have the links to the main channel on YouTube so you can, cause we'll always have our RV 360 video Fridays. So what we do is on Fridays, we combine all of what we thought was interesting and interviews that we do into one video and that is the one we put on on YouTube and then if we uh, some of the stuff might be combined into that video or we might just get a little tidbit we think is just good for Facebook but they're just little samplers of saying hey this is what we can do with 360s have fun with it and come visit us on Friday so I hope you like the idea and the concept I urge you to take a look at some of our RV 360 moments that we're posting onto Facebook and see if you like them. And what's really cool about those is you can take your, if you put a full screen on your cell phone, you can move the screen with your fingers, of course, but now through Facebook, you can easily take your cell phone, play the video, and just move your cell phone and not yourself. Um, you can, well, you can turn yourself in a circle and the screen will follow you so it's really a neat concept you look up the, the video will change you look down the video will change it's just fun and so we hope you enjoy them we're trying different ideas of uh, looking at you'll see we had some stuff of some um, canyons and we've done stuff with alpacas and we've done some stuff with a tour around the rv we're getting ready to launch something for um in a park we put a <laughs> put our 360 camera around a bunch of geese that were getting fed. They weren't very hungry, but it was kind of neat to see them from a 360 camera. So I hope you enjoy those. We'd love to hear your comments about the 360 camera. We're still experimenting with it, but it seems like a real positive thing. We get a lot of great comments of, that was really cool. And we think they're cool too. And believe me, we have, most of our videos are normal videos. Uh, but the 360s are just something special. And if you like them, great. If not, we understand. We'll, uh, just please support us with our normal videos. So there you go. There's something new for the future. When it comes to cameras, the other thing we wanted to talk about was a lot of folks ask us what we use. And we use a lot of stuff. Um, but our main thing that we use because it's spontaneous is the GoPro. And... We also have a GoPro and a gimbal, but it's kind of funny is when you're actively doing RVing and you got so many things going on and sometimes things just happen quickly, you don't necessarily have time to grab the gimbal. And you may not know this, and a lot of people should know this, that some of these gimbals, if the GoPro's mounted on it and it's running, it will do a noise interference with the audio. <clears throat> and the way to get around that is you have to get an adapter for your GoPro, plug it into the side, and use a separate mic to get rid of that buzz. And that's fine and great when you have a controlled situation. But a lot of times, Sherry and I will be pulling the fifth wheel, and maybe we pull over on a viewpoint and it's kind of a lot of traffic and we're going fast and we have a time restraint we have we you know we show you what we see and a lot of times we don't have time to pull out the gopro with a gimbal so 
in a way, I'd love to apologize to say, hey, some of our shots might be a little shaky or not as professional as they could be. But at the same time, my argument is our videos are real and spontaneous. And so that is an indication of that happening. And then a lot of times when we're like, for example, we're in Seaside and we're doing a, a, a ride down the coast, just pulling over, finding anything we thought was gorgeous, and we did. And once again, it was a spontaneous trip. And then when we get close-ups, we use a Canon camera, which is a camcorder that um, we really like. It's great because it's small. You can easily pack it and go down a trail, pull it out, and you could actually do some zooming. The GoPro is not capable of doing that. The problem is, is it, the more you zoom, the more if you're shaking or moving, uh, it gets harder and harder to, to stay on the target. And of course, the, the, the answer to that is a tripod. Well, when you got a dog and it's raining and you're trying to be careful not to break your neck on a trail and, um, and you didn't even expect to go down that trail in the first place, you're probably not going to have your tripods with you. Uh, we try to have a mono stick with us once in a while, but it's hard to get those shots as perfect as we like to get them. So... I apologize sometimes for the shots that we get may not be as uh, glamorous as we'd like to get them. But at the same time, we're trying to show you this is the real world and it comes at you fast sometimes. And we're just grateful that we had a camera at the time to do that. And we like to switch from the GoPro to the Canon, which is the small Canon R600 is what we use, and I have a video about that if you look in our archives. And we love those two cameras because they're compact, easy to carry. We take them everywhere. And when we get in a situation where I know the GoPro can't see something um, far away, we pull out the other camera, and then we edit the, the two cameras together when we do a show for you. So that is another thing to consider. I'm hoping to pass that on to other folks who are getting ready to do a lot of... Um, traveling to and want to do camera work the gopro we love that thing it's it's so spontaneous and tough little camera but when it comes to doing those close-up and zooming in you're going to want something else and right now we're using the little canon and we are thinking about a canon g330 which is a really nice camera but it's a little bulky so i'm not sure about it yet but we'll see and probably try to get in the habit of trying to take mono sticks with us more often but it's a real dilemma when you're trying to do shows and also live your life and do show people what RVing is all about so there's something in the future for you too so let's bring up another camera that we use that we don't talk about very much it's called a Brino and it's a camera that specializes in time lapse and that's really all it does and a lot of folks said, well, I got my GoPro. I can do time lapse with that. And I agree, we did some, we've done video, uh, time lapse with that before. But the Brino is over the top. Oh my gosh. It's the coolest little unit. Uh, what will, you, all you have to do is program it based on what you're going to do. So uh, sometimes I'd take the Brino and I would just go outside and it's a beautiful star, star night. All I have to do is tell the Brino is, I want you to take photos of stars tonight. And it will do all my settings and, and, and program my time-lapse speed automatically. And then it, the only thing I can, what I can do is I can make the exposure more or less and experiment with that. And it just does a fantastic job. Uh, it does eat up batteries a little bit, but um, <clears throat> anyway, I've, I've used it on on just clouds I've used it in weather coming in I've used it on stars and so far it's just really fun to use uh, you have to kind of plan your event ahead of time like what you're gonna do have to keep in mind that, uh, that uh, what kind of weather is coming in so you don't want your brain no sitting out in the rain you can get a cover for it but it has limitations but uh, you can get a waterproof case for it and I do have one and 
The only thing is, is if it's raining, things like that, and it's still in a waterproof case and you got it tipped upwards, you're going to get water spots on your lens. So any, but I'm telling you, the Brino, B-R-I-N-N-O camera, uh, it's a HD camera. Uh, and I think RV or TV, he's the one that told me about it, but the newer ones is the HD quality and that's the one we have. And it's really cool and you can get different lenses for it too. So we're still learning how to use the the different lenses and how we want to do different time lapse but those videos we launch on the weekends because a lot of folks just want reports and things like that and that's what we do during the week and so when we do something that's just pretty pictures um, something that you need to just kick back have a cup of coffee and just relax and we sometimes put music to it and stuff those are beautiful videos but they're not as popular but some of us, like us older folks, <laughs> at least I do, I love a good nature video sometimes, just a change of pace. So when we launch a video on the weekend, that's typically the kind of video it is, that, that we're launching. And then during our week, we always have our normal reports and things that are going on with RV Travel Quest. This brings me to what is the schedule that we're using for our videos. And so I'm going to try to explain it to you the best I can is we have RV Travel Buddy and that's kind of our big platform. And then we have all the kind of branches to it. So I'll just talk about a couple of them, a couple of them, which is RV Travel Quest, which is me and Sherry. We obviously have this show, RV Talk Radio. We, um, we also have AmazingRV.TV, and we have the mission series that we did, and we branch all that into RV Travel Buddy. So what we do now is, is RV Talk Radio will always be launched, on unless we change our schedule, but on Monday mornings like you're seeing today. And that allows you all week in to play this show, play little tidbits of it as you like to get through the week. And that's why it's an hour show or more. <clears throat> then Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays is RV Travel Quest or RV Travel Buddy videos. RV Travel Buddy will be more, um, if you see an RV Travel Buddy beginning, it's because it's an RV tip or a resource that we want to share with the whole world. If it's RV Travel Quest with Rob and Sherry and Cinder and Lily the kitty, um, those are our adventures during the week also. So if you wonder, well, why does some of our videos have RV Travel Buddy in front of it? Is it because we think it's a resource that'll be good for other RVers as a education type of video. And so um, not that RV Travel Quest can't be educational too, but when it's really focused on a product or if we're talking about a sealant or something unique, that'll be an RV Travel Buddy video. If it's about me and Sherry and the funny things going on or serious or problems or whatever, that's RV Travel Quest. Then Fridays we reserved for um, 360 videos. So that's 360 video Friday. And so on Fridays, we'll always try to launch the combined 360 videos that we have. <clears throat> so I kind of hope that kind of explains our schedule. And of course, I just told you weekends are reserved for pretty videos, <laughs> nature videos, uh, something that's um, you need to probably have a cup of coffee and kick back and, and enjoy and not be busy. Uh, but during the week, I know you don't want fast, you know, long videos. We want to keep them short and to the point and tell the story quickly. On the weekends, those might be a little more drawn out, more relaxing, more because hopefully on the weekend you have a little more time. You're not quite as anxious. You have time to see maybe a 15 minute video and it may be all time lapse. It could be animals. It could be just something beautiful. And uh, those are kind of what we call our special videos, uh, nature videos. And those are weekends. <clears throat> and those only come out when we have them. A lot of times we'll, it takes us quite a while to get enough material to make a whole video out of it. So uh, the last time-lapse video we did last week um, took us almost five weeks to do. 
um cuz not every time lapse we do is pretty and is not what we said doesn't come out the way we wanted it and so we don't even show it so anyway that's our schedule for the future some folks have also addressed that we don't do a whole lot of dash cam photos and i'm i've actually have at this time not much of an interest of getting a dash cam video system but occasionally what we'll do is we mount the gopro up in our dash to when we're on the move we like to show you the different regions that we're going through and we just do little tidbits of it and put a little music to give you the indication that we're moving we're going from one region to another and we only kind of show what's unique during that drive and that's real easy for us to do we just we have a little tripod mount we put it up on our dash and gives you the um, the feeling of where we're going uh, but we really um, keep that minimal uh, so as far as a dash cam video system we're at this time haven't been convinced to buy one yet because we have so many other things we want so <laughs> anyway um, so you can keep um, please let us know of dash cam videos that you guys like occasionally oh, eventually I guess we'll probably get one but uh, we still kind of just keep it spontaneous and we say you know this place is kind of unique on this road once you know I'll have Sherry put the mount up and then we'll record it but I, I really don't need a dash cam running all on a whole trip and try to go through all that material so that's why we don't actually have one so there is the answer to that now for those who are getting ready to become an RVer and maybe want to do a blog or, or, or a channel like we're doing and, and many others I know it's really hard to decide on cameras and things like that and there's all kinds of them and and some of your favorite channels are probably done on an overview on their equipment and Sherry and I are definitely due to do that kind of video too where we actually show you all the different pieces of equipment we use but um, one of the things I can tell you right up front is Sherry's got a beautiful Canon uh, gosh I think it's a 500 something and, my, and I have one too a Canon T3i and it's a video version also the um, uh, S, S oh jeez SLR R but plays videos I can't remember what you call it DSLR okay got it sorry <laughs> senior moment there anyway it's I've used that camera a lot for those of you who probably seen some of my paradigm chimes or earlier videos where we did some green screen stuff that's my preferred camera to do that kind of work and it is very high quality very nice stuff but you know to do this blogging and 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 documenting as you're going you really don't need to go buy yourself a six seven eight one thousand twelve hundred dollar camera like that um, there is some really good stuff out there. Sony and Canon are making some really good preferred cameras that are good for what you call uh, vlogging. Uh, we don't use that type, um, but I we have friends that do, like the Freedom Theory. They use a Canon camera that's uh, compact, easy to use, has a flip up. You can see yourself holding the camera up, and it's and it fits right in your pocket. And that's what it's all about. With Sherry and I, we utilize the GoPros and the Canon um, R600 uh, camcorder, and it's HD. And just make sure that if you do a step-up camera, that it has the capability of connecting a microphone to it. Uh, there's a, been occasions where we've had to use a wireless mic, uh, maybe windy, or we're doing something from a distance. Uh, you want a camera that you can plug an external mic to and so that's where the little Canon why we like that so well and it was a very well priced camera it was like around 250 bucks and I believe a lot of the Canons and the little Sony's uh, can do that too so my my biggest message to you is don't think you have to run out and buy one of those really nice Canon or um, any of those big you know this cameras like that um, to do vlogging uh, it, you can do a lot with a little so anyway 
don't think you have to have a big pile of cameras like <laughs> like Sherry and I are getting. But um, we've really, you know, we've gone so far in this now that occasionally we like to pull out the powerhouses and <laughs> for something real special. So we do love our bigger cameras, but don't be in a hurry to get one. Just go with what you know. Well, sticking with the future, I want to change gears. We've been talking about cameras and things like that a lot. So what I want to talk about is rigs. <laughs> I know a lot of folks, uh, especially in the wintertime, I think we're seeing a lot of people looking at rigs, buying new rigs, changing their rigs, etc. And it's like, what's what's Rob and Sherry going to do? And, and why are we using a fifth wheel? And the answer is, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, we do. Sherry and I have actually had both. We've had motorhomes and we've had fifth wheels. And our very first RV that we used for traveling full-time was a Montana. I believe it was a 34-foot back in 2006. And then we later moved on to a 40-foot Fleetwood Discovery. And we liked them all. We really did. We liked all the rigs we had. Um, the one thing what... You know, in 2008, and long story short, we uh, had um, uh, we were financially wiped out. <laughs> anyway, we went back, hit went back to nine to five jobs, got our lives back, fixed a few things, and then knew that since you know we were in our 40s, it's like all right, the company I went back to, I worked for for several years before, and I went back to it, and I actually was able to get my pension back, and uh, so. I just, we hung out there for five years till I hit 55 and say, all right, I, I, I need to, I want to get back to my normal life, which was um, internet marketing before that. Anyway, so that's what we did. So we, you know, what needed to get an RV again. And so we already and always had this beautiful truck. And, and some of you have seen it. We have a 2002 uh, F-350 Ford Super Duty uh, truck with a 7.3 liter diesel in it and, and it's just it's a dream truck and so it's kind of the last of its kind so I it just didn't want to get rid of that so when we we're ready to get an RV again it kind of made sense for us to stick with um, some kind of trailer or fifth wheel what we like about fifth wheels is they feel more like a home and I'm talking from experience I've had motorhomes before I love motorhomes there's nothing better than cruising down the highway in a motorhome and there's big cushy seats and and your wife being able to get up and go get us a, a coke whenever we want when we're driving and your restrooms right there you just pull over and you're there <coughs> um, yeah fifth um, motorhomes awesome well Sherry and I uh, know from experience that when we travel we want to move enjoy a place for a little bit of time move again and not keep hopping and skipping all over so here's where you know the motorhome is truly um, and I, when I say motorhome I'm, I'm referring to whether it's going to be class B which is not really a motorhome class C or class A <clears throat> And if you're the kind of folks that kind of like to pick up and go, pick up and go, want to hit all the states and the whole works, um, and if you're really interested in boondocking and, and, or semi-boondocking when you're doing that, the, the motorhome is definitely the way to go. Um, but Sherry and I, even though we're pulling this big beast of a uh, Montana fifth wheel when we set it up it feels a lot like a home and, and the floor plans if you go to it and I highly you always want to go to an RV show but when you go to the floor plans of a fifth wheel when you walk into those things you never know what you're gonna see but when I walk into a motorhome I typically know what I'm gonna see because they tend to be a little bit the same a little different and a, a twist on all the different stuff but basically the couch is always on this side the chair is always on this side and it's always kind of the same to us 
So when it comes to floor plans and that real homey feeling, Sherry and I have always felt that the fifth wheel offered more of that real mobile home type of traveling where you're, you really feel like you got a cozy little home wherever you're at. And, uh, but <laughs> please don't ever think I don't like motorhomes because as Sherry and I get older, we may find that unhitching and, and taking care of a fifth wheel is just a little bit too much for us. And we'll trade in this beautiful fifth wheel we have in our truck and maybe go into a 34 foot motor home and just pull a little car behind it uh, to make life a little easier. And so both have really nice advantages. You just kind of know what you want. So anyway, in the future for me and Sherry, right now it's a fifth wheel and we're going to stick with that for a while and, until our health tells us otherwise or something changes. Now it's time to talk about where in the heck are we, are we going? <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who know us, we started from Washington State and that was um, part of the mission series and we've worked our way along the Washington coast and a little bit of the Oregon coast and then we shot on over to Central Oregon where we're just getting ready to leave from there. And some, and I want to remind that everybody has a different adventure going on. So our adventure compared to Spot to Scott's that we talk about a lot or, or Kaylee and Josh with the Freedom Theory and, and some of the other great people we're meeting, um, we're going to be different. <laughs> and they're going to be different. It was because the resources and um, situations different for everyone. So I may have, you may have seen a video of ours where I was making fun of that the fact that Sherry was gone for a week. <laughs> and uh, and by the way, Sherry helped me with that video. So uh, please understand, we've been married for 35 years, so we can have fun with each other. And, and she actually help me buy the stuff for that video including the oreo cookies so it was just a fun video to do anyway we uh <laughs> there's a long story about oreo cookies i'll have to tell you someday but <laughs> anyway um so for us we came to central oregon because we have family here so this was a great stop for us because sherry had to do one week of contract work up in washington which is a uh, we don't know how long that's going to last. So right now, every month, we have to be near an airport. So this was kind of our first exercise of doing that. So we knew Central Oregon would be a comfortable place to do it at. At the same time, when we got here, we found out that, you know, we had a few things that we needed to tweak on the RV. So if you watch our videos, you'll see that we've been tweaking the slides. We were having a little bit of leak issues, um, not to mention I had a little problem backing the RV in here and hit a branch and that caused me an issue but this was a great time for us to tweak little things before we go and here's what we're going to do is I think from here we're going to look for an opening that the weather is good enough and shoot over to uh, Seven Feathers Casino and so one of the things we want to tell you is we are not really the kind of people that want to stealth camp and 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 always boondock we like to smell the roses and if we have to pay for those roses that's okay so occasionally you're going to see us go to five-star resorts or places that are um, like um, seven feathers and so i'll report more about that on the next show but uh seven feathers has got we stopped on there when you watch our videos from the journey to Arizona you see that we stopped and took a look at it and they got an RV park to die for and the facilities that go with that RV park was really nice too so we thought it'd be kind of nice it's going to cost us about 40 bucks a day to stay there and they got and probably more and they got swimming pools and hot tubs and just it's an elegant nice RV park and then they have a nice little shuttle that shoots over to the little uh to their casino and they got stores and restaurants over there and uh so yeah we'll be dropping a few you know bucks when we're there so that's just how it is but that's the lifestyle it means sherry like and then we we enjoy 
boondocking just as much as the next person right after that. So um, <laughs> you're going to see a little bit of everything from us. So we're not um, we're not super well to do, but we're certainly not. So we have to always watch every penny. So life is short and we want to enjoy all the different amenities. We like fine dining once in a while. We like a five star resort. And you'll see us stop at a few. And, and that's going to be one that I'm sure that not everybody could afford. But we're certainly, uh, we have a lot of followers that do that kind of stuff. And the only reason we're going to Seven Feathers is other RVers told us about it. And if we end up in uh, Las Vegas, we won't be using, probably won't be using Thousand Trails. We'll probably be going to the Oasis. And that's also considered a five-star RV resort and we love that place. And uh, uh, it's not cheap either. It, but it's located great. It has really nice amenities. Uh, the community center is something to die for. Uh, there's card games going on there and things that people do. You don't even have to leave the park. You don't even have to go to the Strip to enjoy the Oasis RV Park. But you're going to have to drop some funds to do that. So it's just how Sherry and I are. And... But in between all that time, we'll probably do a lot of common sense kind of RVing where we'll use our Thousand Trails membership, um, try to get good discounts, try to boondock once in a while. We're going to utilize casino parking lots a lot uh, like we did in Ocean Shores. And so that's the kind of things you're going to see with us in the future. So after Seven Feathers, we're thinking about probably shooting back towards the coast again. And our goal is to try to get over to Highway 1 along the coast that we had, you know, we couldn't go that way when we went through the Arizona trip. But we, uh, once again, we're going to take our time. So that's why we like a fifth wheel. We'll go for a couple of weeks. And after, well, Seven Feathers will be only be like a three-day thing. But after that, we'll be staying a week or two at each place that we go because it makes more sense and it's more cost-effective. And it gives us a chance to smell the roses. Um, and we've talked about this on the show again, to pick up and go and pick up and go. It's stressful. It's hard in equipment and it's really not fun. And so our RV is our home. And so to keep picking up and moving your home every other day is not fun. I'm telling you. And that's the biggest mistake a lot of RVers do when they first start out is go, 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 go. And then you, what you need to learn is. If you can do it from day one is go to the first place, stay a week, go to the second place, stay two weeks, um, maybe in another place, stay for a month and just try that. And you'll find that you're actually enjoying where you're going, relaxing and you're not stressing out. And it's easier on the wallet, too. So uh, I don't care how much people make. It's always good to save a buck. So that's our future plans for travel. While we're talking about the future of RVing, Here's an observation that I think is going to be real common is we're in Central Oregon and I thought I'd do some tours of some of the RV parks around here. And I went to one over by the Deschutes County Fairgrounds and it's pretty modern. And I went in there and I always tell them that I'm driving around and let them know who I am so I don't <laughs> have the RV police get me. Anyway. So they made a real interesting observation and comment <clears throat> that I think is getting common everywhere is in Central Oregon, there's been a couple of new companies coming in and there's been kind of a housing shortage over here for like rentals and apartments. So companies like Facebook and some other companies like that have opened their doors in Prineville, Oregon and other places. And it's a great communication center and they can get well, because of the region, they can get labor at a reasonable price and um, it's just more cost effective for a, um, a communications company like that to work in a place like this. <clears throat> so, sorry. So what's happening is people move here to work for Facebook or some of these other companies and they can't find a place to live. And so some of them find the alternative of using an RV. Well, guess what that's been causing? A problem with enough RV parks to sustain people to live in month to month or for you know annual um, time periods. 
and creating a shortage because this is also a tourist area. So if you're going to start an RV park from scratch, I'd highly recommend you, you make one in Central Oregon. But I think the other thing is people are discovering RVs as another alternative for daily living. And and when I was in Seattle, there's people making, you know, uh, six-figure incomes and still living in an RV, which means that their overhead's way down and they're saving a lot of money. Let's put it that way. People are starting to get it. And so our last show, we were talking about the American dream might be a little different. I think more and more people are just discovering that the RV industry or living in an RV has its benefits as still having a nice way to live um, and being in a modern kind of household, you might say. But the difference is it's on wheels. But your overhead can be significantly lower than owning your own house uh, in many ways. So it's affecting this area big time. And I believe it's ha I'm noticing it in the big cities too. Some folks are saying, I'm not buying that four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar $500,000 house. I want to live in a nice place. I'll get myself a nice hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar motorhome, and live in that, or a beautiful fifth wheel for under a hundred thousand, and have all the amenities of a brand new house, just smaller, but a lower rent, uh, easier uh, utilities are better. It's just a great way to go, and I think more and more people are discovering that. I'm betting in the future that we're going to start seeing in some areas an RV park shortage. And so, hey, if you got a wad of cash and, you're <laughs> and you can uh, create some RV parks out there, I got a feeling it's going to be a good decision. But anyway, I think in the future we're going to start seeing that as an issue. I think another future issue like RV parks that still still seems to be an issue and believe me it's much better than it used to be but when Sherry and I were first full-time RVers in 2006 and 7 the internet was a nightmare and so it, it was just so RV parks most of them was unheard of to have wireless internet even at an RV park so believe it or not back in those days we got a HughesNet ac account got our own satellite and every time I stopped I had to set up a satellite and it wasn't easy back then you always had to tune it in to get my internet and it wasn't the best internet in the world either because it was a pulsating internet signal but uh, I was able to do my job back then while it's getting better and better that most RV parks have some form of art of internet but it's still an issue. And the problem is now that back in the day of 2006 and 7, you didn't need as much bandwidth and as much power as we do nowadays because you know everything's being done on video and everything's being done in social networks and photos and pictures. and um, So now it's bandwidth. And <laughs> he's like... There's so many arguments about the different ways to do bandwidth and, and, and doing the kind of jobs that me and Sherry do where we depend on the Internet. Um, uh, I have to agree that the best way to go is using cell phones and getting like an air card or something like that. But I tell you, uh, for example, I have an air card that gives me 30 gigabytes of uh, data a month, and I can burn through that in a week and a half if I really wanted to. So I always use assistance on that. And that's also one of the reasons why we have Wi-Fi Ranger on our uh, rig to try to capture any free internet we can. So what I have discovered, especially in like Thousand Trails, they'll have internet. They'll say, oh, yeah, you got to go to the community club to get it. Well, if you um, kind of know that ahead of time and try to get your RV within a, you know, a, a site, you know, because you're dealing with radio waves. Um, you, I can pull the internet out of those community centers easy with a Wi-Fi Ranger. So whenever I can tap in the free internet, I do. And then my last choice is to use my cell phone. And yes, I know there's all these other plans out there and stuff, but um, 
everybody's a little different and their scenarios a little different but the best dependable fast internet for uploading and um, videos uh, is definitely your cell phone uh, so far is what I found that's dependable um, especially when you get in places that have limited internet and you have a job to do so the future of internet I, I bet you I mean you can see it on the TV already the battle for the bandwidth and, and, and trying to get the um, the customers you can see uh, all the different companies fighting for our business but when they the ones that start really listening to what we need and we need internet um, some companies gonna finally get it and say you know what we're gonna create a company that really has unlimited internet and we're not gonna play games with you and let me tell you if someone gets wise enough so I, they're gonna make them make millions um, but right now they're just trying to you know put the squeeze on us all of us for limited bandwidth and, and um, yes there's people are very abusive um, something happened with um, one co karma company <laughs> where people had the unlimited program and somebody uh, a whole bunch of clients are burning way I mean much more than you and I could comprehend as far as bandwidth and so it ruined the program but that's the example of a company trying to do it <laughs> anyway so I think when we're talking about the future of RVing I think we're gonna see significant differences eventually here as soon as the battle and competition kinda gets going here and whoever becomes the winner um, that something good and great will come out of all this competition and internet will be less and less of an issue but right now it's still an issue and if you depend on the internet for business or supporting your business or your telecommuting uh, internet is probably the highest thing on your list to make sure that you can have to support your income so that's what I gotta say about that for now and and we love your comments about that too and, and I know everybody says well this is the best and this is the best but it's not always the best for each person it's a little different um, so anyway internet I think it will get better over time but competition needs to play itself out and we'll see something better in the future so I think taking a big look at the big picture I think the future for RVing is, is going to be much brighter I think there's going to be more of a recognition of it I think there's a lot of denial going on because society is still into the you know uh, the big houses the cars and and um, I'm starting to hear more and more about the stories of tiny homes and, and, and RVing and things like that and I think as the talk gets greater and greater the more that other investors and, and companies and uh, that uh, may start recognizing this industry a little more and, and think you're gonna maybe start seeing more RV parks maybe even new kinds of RV memberships out there that uh, for example some of these memberships that are out there right now are not really good for snowbirds um, when it comes to going to one place down south and staying for three or four months it's hard to find a membership that would actually cover that and give you significant discounts uh, I think maybe even our government might recognize that it's a good alternative for our seniors uh, for a better income and maybe subsidies or something better for their uh, if they're living that way maybe give us a better break in our our health and medical uh, I, th I, th I think we're gonna see all kinds of new kinds of modifications and you can kind of even say and I'm not a political guy but you can kind of feel it even with the talk of elections and, and and you're seeing people that you would not normally see do well in the uh, uh, possible elections in the future and it's because a lot of people say we really I mean what not we need change but we really need change we need someone realistic who's really grounded and not uh, that's not blinded by 
greed and, and money, when they get those kind of leaders and in, in, in not only in a federal level, but in the state level, that this industry will be recognized even more. And in some cases it'll be bad and other cases will be good. Um, there's a lot of change in the air and it's going to take time. <laughs> it always takes time and it's never fast enough, but who knows? Uh, Sherry and I, we got new battles now that we're retired. Now we have to deal with different kinds of health insurance and different issues of getting older. And uh, so uh, we have different concerns and say some folks that are younger that feel like they might live forever <laughs> and it just doesn't happen. But changes in the air and it may not be exactly how we pictured it, but we just got to roll with the punches. But anyway, that was kind of a taking a look in the future for Sherry and I and also what we're seeing from the outside looking in, I guess, as far as the RV industry. We're um, hopeful, very hopeful, and we'll continue to keep our eyes open for things that are unique and pass them on. And that brings me back to you. So if you have something you'd like to uh, share with us, don't forget that you can email me directly at rob at rvtalkradio.com or you can go directly to rvtalkradio.com and go to our contact page and talk to us there. Let us know what's on your mind. And if you're a RV product or services company and like us to um, talk about you a little more, uh, give us a holler. We can figure out what kind of program will work for you and work for us and um, we also have companies that aren't directly RV related but support RV related activities we like to hear from you too so <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the show today I really am thankful to having you we're very grateful for all the people that tie in with us and listen to our show and from RV Talk Radio, we wish you safety. We wish you a future with RVing. And we hope we hear from you someday. So anyway, everybody, thanks for listening. Bye now.